Hello and welcome everyone. It is May 15th and today is our last remote learning support webinar. We're very excited. Uh, we were taking bets on how many folks were going to join us today. And, and it looks like we're getting closer to mine and, oh, no. and Jason and so wonderful. Let's, let's look at what we're doing today. Let's, let's glance at what we're doing today. So this is the website that we use to house our remote learning support. Um, we, we are approaching this from, from three different, with three different events. One are these Friday webinars. The structure of our webinar today is going to be the first half. We'll, we'll have a good conversation about what do we mean when we say remote learning. By this time, we're all experts. We've all done this for about a month and a half. And, and so we'll, we'll think through what we mean. We'll interview a real Nebraska educator. Um, and that's the, the theme of this support is real Nebraska educators supporting real Nebraska educators. Uh, really want to highlight that at the end of the month, uh, on the 27th for this group, we'll have a half-day workshop where you, we will walk you through the process of creating your own remote learning plan. And then in June, we have a two-day conference that's focused on supporting all of our district stakeholders, including educators, but also our administrators and, and, and others. Um, and so before we continue, I want to say hello to everyone. My name is Nick Ziegler, and I'm at ESU5, and uh, want to really highlight that this work, this remote learning support, is a collaborative effort across our ESU system. There's a lot of our ESU friends online here, and I'm joined by co-hosts Jason Everett at ESU10, uh, Eileen Barks at ESU2, and Andrew Easton is at our ESU Coordinating Council. Um, welcome, welcome. I, I believe this first uh, part is mine, and so let's glance uh, just a little bit at some of the resources that we have on our Digital Age Pedagogy website around remote learning support. So at the beginning of pandemic time, the Department of Education released a, a continuity of learning guidance document, and there's a direct link to that if you're interested. Um, but they identify two different ways that, that our districts might engage our students throughout remote learning. One is thinking about educational opportunities. And, and the short definition here is, is that we're, we're continuing that learning. There's new learning that we're, that we're focused on uh, a skill or a standard and that there's some instruction. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that here in just a little bit. Uh, but the other component, the other option that they recommend or, or are suggesting is enrichment opportunities. And we think about these a little bit more like how can students deepen their knowledge of what they've already uh, done? Or maybe it's an, an opportunity uh, to go, go to a, on a virtual field trip, for example. Not necessarily tied to a specific skill or, or instruction, um, but, but good opportunities for kids to enrich their, their education. Let's, let's just drive right through here. So um, when, when we talk a little bit more deeply about educational opportunities, the framework that we're promoting here is, is a five-step process that we think about, so we identify, what is that learning goal of this remote learning plan? And our, our recommendation is that we're focused on one or a small set of, of learning objectives in any given remote learning plan. So what is that goal? We, we like to turn that goal into a self-assessment. And this is directly related to the work that we, we have done over the last decade in our state around blended learning best practices or, or digital age pedagogy when we think about empowering learners. It's important that, that kids have an idea. Where are we going? What are we going to learn about? But then also desiring to identify where is that instruction coming from? So if we're in an English classroom and we're thinking about uh, students in investigating theme, for example, identifying theme, 
we need a little bit of instruction on what is theme. How do I identify theme? And then after I've got that, that reading or that video, right? These might be online teacher interactions potentially, but after I've had that instruction, I need that quick process activity where I get some immediate feedback on the learning that, that I just went through. Am I on the right path or not? Moving forward, thinking about practice, maybe practice in a math classroom looks like those question sets to, to promote that fluidity, that, that transfer of my understanding of the equation to the rubber meeting the road and getting the, 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 the problem sets done. Maybe in a social studies classroom, that looks a little bit different. You're not practicing necessarily a sequence or, or that, that equation, that process, but rather we're, we may be focused on the, the knowledge, maybe the key terms in, in that classroom. So maybe a Quizlet practice, for example, so that I can solidify my understanding of these different key terms in the social studies classroom might be an example. Finally, getting kids to create a quick product that shows what they know in relation to that objective. We're not talking about a 15 page paper, a 25 slide presentation. We're thinking smaller. We're, 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 we want to get kids in a math classroom. It's important, for example, math discourse, getting kids to share, to explain that deeper level learning of, of their understanding around that objective. The same thing can be said of the English classroom, the science classroom. What is that performance task that kids are going to do in that science classroom, for example? So you'll notice it says online tasks and offline tasks here. That's not necessarily to say that you have to always have an online or an offline component but maybe you do. In, in some of our classrooms, maybe you do have, have kids that don't have access, that equitable access to the technology or the internet. So, so it's there for you to think through it. Uh, this is the link to that um, document, that planning chart. Um, and then when we scroll down further, I'm really happy to share that we have some great Nebraskan educators already have gone through this process of creating remote plans that they're sharing out. You can filter this by content area and grade range to find, for example, in an elementary classroom, I might want to know an elementary math example. And, and so I might find slope and every one of these has a direct link to the plan. You're able to make a copy of it, you can see it, you can play with it, um, and, and make it your own. All of the content on this website really is meant for you to, to adapt and, and make your own how, how you and your district, in accordance with district guidance, see fit. Um, to, to, to get access, if you want to create your own, then wonderful, this is the process you go through. You, you fill out this weekly schedule auto-generator, maybe you've used that uh, planning document to help organize your thoughts before you start the process, but you fill then out the form, you select which of these beautiful templates you would like to have access to, and when you press submit, it will automatically create a Google slide presentation, a Google slide one page, and share it with you with editing rights so that you can then add the links, for example, or do whatever it is you would like to do. A key benefit here, if you choose to play along, is that we, our ESU partners, will give you feedback on your work, will help you get this um, to a final product. So wonderful, that's the auto uh, generator. And then uh, last pieces of support around uh, our educational opportunities. And another example, there are three examples in here of what it might look like in an elementary classroom. Also, I like here that we're identifying bonus tasks. And I think this is a key, key conversation. When we talk about uh, the, de the department's recommendations, right now in lower elementary, I think the time on task, and Eileen, you can help me remember this, but, but in lower elementary, we're looking at somewhere around an hour. 
That is true. And in the upper elementary, an hour and a half, maybe two hours a week, right? When we talk about remote learning. That is also true. So, so the question becomes, what are we doing on that daily basis? Maybe you do get kids through one or two educational opportunities, and then you engage kids with some um, enrichment opportunities as well. Maybe, maybe that's part of it. And, and that, that might look like a choice board of some sort, and, and we'll talk about those in greater depth in just a little bit. Nick, that is a great segue to Jason to talk about enrichment. Welcome, Jason. All right. <clears throat> well, thank you, everybody. Um, I have a document that I'll share here in the chat, and you guys can access it, but I'll also share my screen with that. Um, let me find it here real quick. All right. So I wanted to share a little bit about um, some summer enrichment activities. We're all at the end of the school year and um, I just wanted to be able to um, give you guys some resources uh, to maybe share with your students and parents at home. And so really I kind of tried to um, focus on a couple things, but I really got excited when I started researching this. Um, these are some things that I'm super passionate about and I, I just get super excited about. So um, my list started getting a little bit long, probably longer than the five minutes I was allotted. And since <laughs> Nick talked for so long, I probably don't even have that much time. <clears throat> so a um, couple of highlights here. I did wanna share this with you so that you did have it. I don't need to go over all of these things, but um, some of the things that I thought might be beneficial that you may not have thought of, um, are these frameworks um, that, the, that you may use during the school year, but also it might be a cool idea for students to do this before they leave so that they can find out what their passions are, um, what their creative types are, what their, um, just what they're excited about and what they would like to share. And so, um, if you haven't used or heard of the Genius Hour or Passion Projects, I would highly recommend checking those out. This slide binder um, that's here has so many resources you could definitely get lost. Um, I don't know, probably thousands of links in here, um, but there's some really cool ideas. Um, the other things that I wanted to show that you may not have heard of are this Find Your Grind. And <clears throat> I kind of think of this as the alternative um, play, the, the, the place for alternative kids, um, the concept behind this is everybody has skills, no matter who you are. And so there's a little assessment here that they can take. Um, and it's this uh, Find Your Grind is by Mike Smith from Lincoln, Nebraska. And it's, a, it's just, just blown up. It's a huge nationwide project now. Um, and I highly recommend you, you check it out, especially for those kids who may not like school quote like school um, this is this is a great place for them um, <clears throat> and then lastly um, this is something that um, Diana Steinbrink who's online here shared with us a while back and it's just Adobe's creative types um, everybody is creative it's just a matter of what is your creative type and so here's a, an assessment that you can do to find out how you are creative and then um, resources uh, to point you in those directions. Um, and then lastly, um, we think about summer enrichment, but I also thought of, I, I think teachers really need to focus on this too. So here's some really good resources in terms of uh, teachers recharging. And so I hope you have some time to take a look at these. Um, and if you have any questions, let me know. All right. Well, <clears throat> awesome. Thank you so much, Jason, for sharing those great resources and, and Nick as well for uh, walking us through some of those educational opportunities. I want to call a quick time out. Sky, am I pronouncing your name right? I'm putting you on the spot here, but Sky, if I'm saying your name, is, you're retiring today? 
Yes, today's my last day, and it's Sandra Kai. Yes. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay. Well, Sandra, <laughs> I, I just want to take a moment to recognize that, and I hope that you can kind of, if everyone's okay with doing a little clap, um, that is, it's a tough last day, but we're here with you and want you to know that um, we appreciate all your contributions to education, and that's um, good for you. Enjoy hanging out with your grandkids. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, 43 years, by the way. Wow. Fun fact, Sandra Kai was my teacher clear back in elementary in Thurston, Nebraska. Oh, oh, that's cool. awesome. Congratulations, Suzanne. That's fabulous. Oh, that's super cool. So congrats um, and enjoy it. Hey, and uh, um, while we're talking with educators, I'm going to welcome my good friend Hannah Barnhart uh, into our conversation today. And um, I'll let Hannah do a little bit of an introduction. Um, Hannah, we share kind of grade levels and subject areas and um, just kind of give us a general idea to get to know you a little bit. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited. I'm a little nervous. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but I'm so excited to be here. Um, I am Hannah Barnhart. Um, I am in Omaha and I teach at um, Omaha Christ the King Catholic School. And I actually am an alum of Christ the King too. So I'm excited to be a part of Christ the King and having that experience being there as well. It's so obviously with all schools it changes and it's so different than when I was there. Um, I teach fifth and sixth grade language arts and math. I also did passion project this past year, which was awesome. And I did my capstone project for my master's on that. And it was amazing and it was a really cool experience. Next year, I'm gonna be just doing fifth and sixth grade language arts and religion. So it'll be kind of a change, but I'm excited about it. Um, I participated background a little bit. I did a lot of personalized learning and my student teaching into five years now. And then this past year, I got involved with the digital age pedagogy group. And so that's kind of a little bit about me. Yeah. And so through a bunch of those initiatives, got a chance to know Hannah a little bit. And so I'm grateful that uh, you took a little bit of your Friday to share with us kind of how remote learning's going. And so um, we're going to share uh, a plan that was um, share or loaded to the auto generator that Nick alluded to earlier on our website. Um, and so Hannah here in a second, will be bringing, bringing that up, but, uh, Hannah, how, just generally speaking, remote learning, um, now that you can kind of, um, well, how many more days do you have left? First of all, I got well, done yesterday. Okay. So mm -hmm. you are, it's summertime. So reflect doesn't, doesn't feel like it, not yet, <laughs> but yeah, it's summertime. Oh. Too. So reflecting back on that, what were some of your takeaways, um, from kind of this earlier portion, uh, or first run at. I would say emergency remote learning as we maybe look to having to go into this type of, um, I hope not in the future, but if we were to have to do that, we're kind of reflecting at this time also. Yeah, um, well, I definitely would say I'm not sugarcoating it. I think for all of us, we can speak that it was not an easy thing and right. it was outside of my comfort zone. I think that I definitely feel confident in the classroom and I'm willing to take risks, but it's a lot harder to do that when we couldn't really set them up when we had spring break and then all of a sudden it was like, oh, we're not going to see you for two weeks. And we're like, oh, it's just two weeks. And then all of a sudden it was going to be the rest of the quarter. Um, I think that with remote learning it was definitely we wanted um just kind of a background of like what it looks like in my school um we do monday through thursday online and um we run we do everything through teams um which there's a lot of positives but a lot of issues like technical there's a lot of technical issues with it so we had to work through that um we really wanted the kids to be independent with it um, but also had to battle the fact that we had we have some families that are very large and they all had to share technology. So making it work where there was online stuff, but also offline stuff and giving them that choice and working with those kids and helping them be successful by having them say, hey, you know, this isn't working for me. Okay, we'll work with you to figure that out. So I feel like our kids got a lot of different skills and being a little more independent and having to work through issues because obviously it wasn't as easy to be able to answer questions right away and everything, um, but we did use like a lot of different like Flipgrid and Padlet and whatnot, and if it didn't work for them, we would always come up with extra things and whatnot for them to do. Um, something that is also different too is we did, ours was two hours a day um, of stuff, but obviously we gave kids more or less based on what they needed and whatnot. Gotcha. So that's, yeah. Well, that as, um, I'll kind of, if you wouldn't mind bringing up your uh, remote learning plan, and we'll get a chance to kind of look through that. And the nice thing, you know, as Hannah's talking there, 
uh, there is something to being able to just, where are you going to house all this information? And then how are you going to facilitate that? And if there is issues with technology and access, how are we going to be able to um, shift in a moment to be able to uh, allow people to not necessarily be tied to their tech, <laughs> uh, if, if that is the, their, their current circumstances? And uh, if you want to hit present with that too, Hannah, I think that should then get it to That'll make it bigger. Yeah, there you go. Okay, uh, th and this is actually the, something you print off or, or just share digitally. Mm -hmm. Go ahead though, Hannah. Let's oh yeah, oh yeah, and I loved this. I didn't know this was a resource and all of a sudden I was like, oh my gosh, this is so great. It was super easy to use. And I actually just put um, in what I did the last couple weeks with um, just kind of a piece of our writing um, where we broke it into steps. And I think um, a lot of things, I'm sure with everybody here, we, I did a lot of, I tried to like skim it down to, okay, what is the bare bones that I can be giving my kids? Um, where they can still be independent with it because I think a lot of parents were going a little crazy and we're like all right we're gonna give them stuff that they can handle and they can work through on their own if they need our support we'll give office hours and whatnot um, so this is something that we did over three to four days um, and we just did some creative writing just to finish off the year because you know when it starts getting nice out it's a little bit harder anyway during school so I can't even imagine when they're at home um, so I just organized um, the must do's and may do's into the different categories. And when I filled out Nick's thing, super easy. Um, it, I just like bare bones filled it out what I wanted. And then when it got sent to me, I started adding more information and adding links and everything um, that I was gonna use. So I, for, I made actually two different ones just to show how they can be a little bit different. Yeah. like that I'm kind of weird um got very excited about this is fun to mess with um so I just for this lesson I did where they enter I introduced it and it was a video that I found online and I also found like a website that they could check out and explore mm -hmm. um to introduce the information and then a padlet where they that would be like the check and to check in to see and to respond to their classmates because for fifth and sixth grade they get very very pumped about communicating with their peers um I'd say sixth grade it's a little bit harder to engage them so I try to do different things like this but fifth grade gets very very excited about all this so definitely a difference in the two grades um, and then kind of moving down I had templates and rubrics so as they're working through I kind of did this one that I have set up there's more must do's with working through stuff but then the may do's are you know working uh, having a zoom session so this past week i had um like two hours where i was on and i had a bunch of kids bop in and out checking in with me on their limericks and whatnot and then um kind of moving into that final draft i gave them the option and choice on how they wanted to send it in because some of them it doesn't work i'm like okay that's fine you make it work do what you got to do and at the end we did a poetry slam and it was very good. I wish I could share the picture because it was awesome. All the kids had their little berets or hats and their cups of cocoa at 10 a.m. And I was playing some, some of them were playing some like jazz music. It was, it was really good. And they were very into it. And it was, it was a special way to end the school year this year. So that was kind of our final end of the year um, poetry slam to share what they created and they were into it. It was good. It was really good. Do you want me to show the other one then and show how it's different? You can. I, I think there's a couple of talking points through here, though, real quick. And just before we even like move along is to say that one, I, I love the kind of linear, you know, you can see this down the, the left side of the page there. Um, we also have across the top there the self check, right, where they can, uh, you know, before the learning and, and then you can even bring that around uh, at the end as well to kind of mark progress with how they feel, how comfortable they feel with the goal that was put before them. Um, but one thing I really want to stress is I love that your vision was collaboration uh, and I think that uh, as we were all just trying to find ways to through packets or <laughs> online facilitate <laughs> and get learners access to resources uh, it is important I think to, to consider how much learning is communal and that we need each other in those processes and everything from the Padlet as you began the journey here to um, just the awesome idea to do a poetry slam zoom poetry slam <laughs> yeah there are so many snaps we had to practice <laughs> Uh, and that's that is uh, that's special and that's something that those kids and they like, crave that and they learn so much better from each other so I feel like that was such an obstacle but th the beginning of this whole process it was just giving us grace and getting something to them to work on so I feel like that was something that was gradual and giving them that interaction 
is important. That's, uh, that is definitely um, true that it, we have to give ourselves grace as we acclimate to this. But you know, I mean, you guys, it's Friday. We are all online learning. You guys are here because you care and you want to learn a little, like move this um, work forward. And so I'm just, I'm, I'm so grateful for that. Uh, let's check out one more, maybe kind of very briefly. Um, so okay. that I'll go super quick. 30-ish. We can, but it's cool that you already moved on to your second one. This is the first yeah. one we'll share. I know. I was like, well, I, I guess I could do like a different angle, but it's still like a very similar thing. I actually ended up doing this with sixth grade this past week too. Um, so this isn't the same fifth grade, but you could do this with fifth grade technically yeah, um, with some of these skills. But I did for this one, I, sh I presented the information different. We did a live Zoom session and then I also recorded it for those kids that weren't able to make the live Zoom session and then um, had them review figurative language, which we've done earlier this year. Um, their slides and the quizzes, which I made. Um, but also, I mean, Kids know they have that flexibility to do other things too, but that could be something where you say, hey, I want you to make these cards and quiz yourself and do that and then send me the score or whatever. Um, and then kind of moving on, template and rubric and all that. Um, and then having the Zoom session where kids can come in and check in, which a lot of them do. And then I had more may do's with IXL and commenting ideas for figurative language. And then the end result could be choice. And I also have attached on this slide below kind of all, like I quickly wrote down, okay, this is what I'm gonna do during the Zoom session. Here are the resources um, I can show you here. Um, so it was something where I could see myself doing this all during the school year quickly and I could have it all organized on Google. Um, so having like what I want, I want to talk about and also brainstorming with the kids on ways that they can, they can show their understanding of the poem. And I think that's really cool, especially with sixth grade. They love to be able to have that choice and show that ownership of, um, ways they want to present. And I could easily just put what I needed to talk about in there. So, yeah. Oh, thanks. And it's awesome to see too, because you just even find in going from one to the next one, it's easier. You've seen it before once, there's a consistency to that. And I think that's really what uh, another piece that is and nice you, about trying to make it uh, fit to a format for the learner to be able to navigate that in what is difficult when you're not always there to support them step by step along the way. Oh yeah, and I think a quick, like quick one thing is I'm not a one-to-one -one school. So at home, yes, I do a lot of more online stuff because I have that. They have, most of them have that ex accessibility. But at school, I think a way that I would transition this is put adding QR codes to this page and having that as an option. But then also having an offline option, especially at school, or something that if they need to take it home, what can they bring physically home? But also figuring out where to post it. So. It start like I'm starting to think about how what is that transition because I'm not a one-to-one -one school so uh, well uh, I'm gonna say thanks for sharing with all this is incredible our seg our natural segue would be to say hey we're gonna talk choice boards here in a minute actually uh, because uh, and it's cool that you have that student choice and that product piece at the end of this particular plan so that's nice but I, I want to ask real quick um, oh first of all we have a question what is a QR code oh QR I'll, code. I'll, Hannah take it away Oh, I don't really know how to explain it. It's just a, you can put the website in mm -hmm. and, um, and it produces like a little box. I don't know. A, it's almost like a, yeah, a barcode. It, like yeah, it's like a barcode and you can use either an iPod, iPad or a phone and you can scan it and it quickly takes to the site rather than having to type out the whole thing. Yeah, Eileen just shared too in the chat um, a link that you can follow up on or just Google it. And it's something that you can kind of create that students are able to scan just even using the phone app. If you have an Apple um, like iPhone, it's it's cool that you don't even have to have an app in particular. Just use your phone and um, the camera will just instantly take Saves a lot of time. Link too. Yeah. And fifth and sixth, like to dilly dally, I'm like, just do the QR code. Let's go. Let's move on. <laughs> so there you go. Um, last thing then, what are you doing this summer to relax, recoup? Me? Yeah. Um, Drew and I, my husband and I are going on a road trip to Seattle. We're supposed to go to Japan and I'm so sad, but we're going to do a road trip, two week road trip to Seattle. Hopefully national parks will open so we can hit that up, but we're excited. A lot of reading, a lot of hanging out. Well, um, thanks for taking a little bit of time out of your summer to share with yeah. us today. I'm so um, excited. I love being a part of this community. It's the best. It fills my bucket. Oh, uh, yeah. We're, well, I'm, I'm super grateful that you shared with us. So thanks for taking that time today. And I'll throw it to Eileen. Eileen, do you want to kind of get us set up for our breakout sessions now that we get a chance to in invite everyone into the conversation in our breakout rooms? Absolutely. Hannah, you just did an amazing job of showing Ooh. everything that is 
wonderful about remote learning and I'm just giving you a round of applause. You are good. Thank you so much. And you know what? I also loved her last comment about, I love being in this community and that's what this is. This room is smarter than any one of these individuals. It just happens that there's a few of us that plan for the day, but you know what? We're, we're planning based on what you're saying. So our next segment for the next 15 minutes is that we're going to give you choices. We're going to give you two choices. If you would like to go to a breakout room. Oh, Nick, do you want to go there? You can describe it if you want okay. to go to a, go ahead. If you want to go to a breakout room, you're going to do A? You better do this, Nick, because I don't remember what we we're going to do. All right, no worries. <laughs> okay, in, in the breakout rooms, we're, we will uh, have discussions. We'll have discussions around three questions. What's one takeaway from our interview with Han Hannah? And or 10. One or 10. One or 10. Uh, and then what's one idea around building relationships when we get back? If we're in a remote learning context, uh, we thought that would be a good conversation to have in breakout time. And then simply, what is one thing you would like to learn more about? So in the poll, if you would like to participate in the breakouts, please select A. But before you press anything, what's going to happen in B? In B, we are going to examine multiple choice boards. And we're going to look at um, some examples and some of the why behind doing a cho choice board. And we're going to give you a, a document that you can fill in your favorite choice boards or reasons why you would use these in that classroom. That document, though, will be available to everybody to um, that, that whole why of the choice boards. So if you are going to stay and do choice boards, you are going to not accept your breakout because Nick's going to put everybody in breakouts, but just don't accept it and stay right here with us or accept it and go have a fabulous conversation. I, I love that we have a D answer right now. <laughs> it was A or B, folks. Uh, take another 30, not 30 seconds, three seconds. Three seconds, give me an A or B. A is you want to go into those breakouts. B is that you'd like to stay here and talk choice boards. Two seconds. Good, all right. And share the results, very good. We got some responses and I'm gonna create the breakouts. So um, before we get into those breakouts, if, if you would please, uh, this is the link to the Padlet wall, and I'm going to give us five rooms, I think. And so um, when you go into the breakouts, that's the link to the Padlet wall. Please, someone in your breakout room, please add some thoughts. We'll, we'll revisit it afterward. Thank you, guys. We're on our way. Remember, if you don't want to do the breakout session, then you can stay here. And I guess you just click later. All right. Hello, everyone that stayed with us. We're super excited about bringing you um, information about. Hello, everyone. This is where you get to unmute yourself because we're really going to have a conversation. Uh, Hannah, thank you. That was a wonderful presentation. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Yeah. Um, if you would, please click on that chat. And Hannah, I'm going to ask you to be the recorder for your group. I'm going to pop in and out of the different breakout rooms. But if you would use that Padlet wall to help guide your, your conversation, first, um, let's have a good conversation. Hannah's right here for you. If you have questions uh, for her, that'd be great. But what's one thing that you that you liked, or what was a, a takeaway from her presentation? So, so go ahead, Hannah. You're in charge. I'm in charge. Are you sure? <laughs> All right. So, what I just taught. So you can use that for expressing what they know. You can also use this for expressing a product to um, students. So maybe the students are. 
can't hear you, Nick. You are uh, everybody. No. Nobody wants to be with me. They saw who I was and they all left. And they all left. Oh, no. That's um, okay. I'll, I'll push you back in or you can also leave the, the breakout yeah. room, right? Yeah. Good. Yep. Yep. All right. Um, there are some different examples and I am going to share my screen right now and I'm going to show you some examples. And as I show these examples, Andrew is going to put them in the chat box because this document right here or the document that you're working on, I'm going to move it over. Oh, here's somebody else. Hello. I'm muted. No, I'm not. How, how are we doing? Okay. Wonderful. Uh, let's have a good conversation. I, so I've popped in and out of the other rooms and they know what they're doing. Um, there's the, the link to the Padlet has the wall with questions. But that first one is, what was one thing you learned from the interview or a takeaway from the interview? Well, I felt that it wasn't real helpful for my group of kids because I teach the most severe and profound of special ed and they're not real tech savvy. Some of them don't even talk. So, you know, so on that, that aspect, that's... I can't see I use it a lot. Oh, good. Um, potentially in your, in your context, you're looking at it more as a way to communicate to mom and dad as well, mm -hmm. that this is what's expected out of, out of your child. And mm -hmm. so with it, with that context, potentially the, the one pager looks a little bit different for you. Uh, so currently, how have you been communicating with, with parents? I've been doing Zoom meetings once or twice a week and actually talking to them face to face. That's great. Mm -hmm. So, and, and our goal is not that this is one size fits all. That's, that's not our goal, right? Um, so, so potentially you're right. Maybe, maybe you don't want a schedule document like that. Maybe, maybe it would help mom and dad to have, so here is the educational opportunity or that, that uh, instruction practice process pro product that, that we would like to see out of your child with the understanding that uh, those would have to be individualized to meet the needs mm -hmm. of those, those different kiddos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and remind me, it's not Sky, it is? It's Sandra, hi. So um, how about you? You know, I was a Title I teacher, so <clears throat> that doesn't fit the best for me too, but I can really see how it'd be great in a classroom mm -hmm. for, for a classroom teacher to use, yeah. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thanks for sharing. Uh, Melinda is online too. Is she unmuted herself? Yep, I'm here. Um, so I think it would fit right in with what I'm doing already this year. Um, currently, we use Google Classroom as our learning platform, and um, my assignments have been a lot of just Google slideshows that are interactive, kind of like worksheets and check ins, along with videos to kind of explain how to do things. Um, I think the one page would be something really like a great place to um, provide all the information in an organized mm -hmm. way, in a creative way that students would understand, um, especially with the links to go to the places they need you to find additional resources or um, videos. Um, so I think it would fit right in with what I'm already using. Um, just a uh, an easier format for kids to get everything in a one-stop shop type place. Mm -hmm. What grade do you teach, Melinda? Um, I teach third, fourth, and fifth grade math. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, and inside of those exemplars, that, that table on the website, you will see some uh, math examples. And, and, and I think one thing we're trying to communicate with, with this, this structure is that we, we still do need to get to that, that product, com that component of, of students creating that worked example in the math classroom, for, for example. Mm -hmm. um, and, and thinking, not, again, not trying to make it hard for folks. Maybe it's something simple as a flip grid where they 
have solved their problem and then they're explaining to you how they came to their answer. Awesome. Um, let's look at the next question. The next one is, so, so, and Sandra, this doesn't necessarily impact you, but we would love your thoughts on this. Um, the next question is, what are some ideas? Uh, I mean, building relationships is key in any classroom, and I think even more so in a title classroom and a special education environment, uh, third and fourth, fifth math as well. I mean, building those relationships with the students is key. So if, if we were in remote learning at the beginning of the academic year, how, what are some ideas? How might we go about building relationships in that context? Yeah, I, th I think you definitely need to get to, or make phone calls to the parents and, and then try your best to, to uh, I don't know, get acquainted with each child individually. And uh, I teach in Winnebago and there's not many homes that have internet, so it, you can't always do like the Zoom meetings and things, but I guess as much as we could through, um, through iPhones and, and telephone and uh, just, just try to contact each child individually as often as possible to get to know them. I like that, right? So if, if we can't rely on the internet, right? Make, make those phone calls, most yeah. definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, Denise, I, other ideas? I've had a hard time maintaining relationships because a lot of my kids have autism and communicating over the phone or on the internet is really difficult for them. They don't like seeing you on that computer screen. So I've had to really push to get the parents to, you know, at least get them to look at me, you know, and just so they know who I am and that kind of thing. But I think it's really important to maintain those relationships with the parents because if the parent acts comfortable around you and it's going to help the kid to work with you and get on there. But I have tried. Some of my kids have not looked at me once since we started the Zoom sessions. I mean, oh. they refuse. Oh, that's too bad. It's really sad because we worked so hard to build those relationships through the year. And then this kind of is really hard. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> Melinda, uh, are, do you have other thoughts or other ideas? Um, if it's the beginning of the year and we're still doing distance learning um, or remote learning, um, I think starting out with a Zoom where maybe students pick three things that um, describe them and giving each an opportunity to talk about how those objects describe them just to learn more about them. Um, and same thing, I could do the same back to them. Um, something like a we usually do like an all about me poster at the beginning of the school year. We could create that digitally or we could um, give them some examples on what they could do at home to create one on their own with different ideas to add to it. Um, maybe something like create a, a flip grid or a thing link or a, um, some kind of a place where they can show other um, talk about themselves or just to get information out about themselves and I could do the same and just just so we could start learning more about each other um, but again providing digital methods without, without a computer too if they don't have that access great ideas I, I like the connection to so you talked about zoom talked about flipgrid you talked about thing link uh, your great ideas. Uh, I think that's naturally Sandra in your context when when we don't necessarily have the ability to rely on the internet that that makes it more difficult most definitely. Um, but I also Denise I appreciate your your conversation around making those those direct phone calls and, and getting directly contacted with people. Um, well great we're down to the last question here. Uh, what would you like to learn more about? I would like to learn more about um, some more of online things that are good for the kids that are like maybe nonverbal and things like that, that they could do at home. 
It would be good for enrichment over the summer too. Yeah, excellent. <laughs> Sandra, how about you? <laughs> uh, you know, if I if I were going back in the fall, there's many things I'd like to learn. That uh, I love the the poem that Hannah or the, the outline that Hannah had about in the and I like the self check ideas in the corner. You know, things like that. There's uh, yeah, there have been a lot of things that Google, our school is trying Google Meet and, and different things like that. So, yeah, a lot of, a lot of good things out there. There, there are. There's, and once pandemic hit, every single one of those websites wanted to give you free access to the paid yeah. version. And so our inboxes were all flooded with, would you like this? Would you like that? Would you like this? Would you like that? And so it's been kind of a tightrope walk in, for people in my position in terms of reaching out to our educators. We recognize everybody's just being flooded with, oh, with information yeah. right now. Um, yeah. We tried to, hopefully these these types of meetings. Uh, I mean, I don't I don't know about you guys, but I, I seriously am averaging probably four or five Zoom meetings a day, and and that's a lot of Zoom. But um, here we are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's um, good to see things that people have actually used and what worked well and didn't work well. And... I I agree. Thank you. Yes, uh, Melinda, is there is there a topic that you're looking toward? Something you would go ahead. Uh, maybe just to make sure that everything that I'm using, the like copyrighted and everything, is safe. Um, that I'm following the correct rules with, uh, I don't know, videos or website links, things like that. Just making sure everything I'm using is approved and following the rules, I guess. Yeah, that's, that's a really good point. Um, so part of the project that's going to be shared, um, we're, we're asking educators, actually, uh, we've, we, in collaboration with our Department of Education, We've secured some some funds to pay up to a hundred educators to create three of these remote learning plans, and so you'd, you'd earn two hundred and fifty dollars for creating three remote learning plans, working with coaches. But but Melinda, part of that will be um, yes, we want to promote those high quality resources that your district have available. That and yes, we do but that we want those remote learning plans also to be accessible for folks. I mean, it's, it's difficult if, if I put in a remote learning plan that references copyrighted materials, I can't really share that plan very effectively. You can't just take my plan unless you also are paying for that curriculum. Uh, and, and so uh, within this project, uh, it's okay if you want to reference those those copyrighted materials, but that we'd ask you to also find some some open educational resources. So OER is that acronym, Open Educational Resources. And there certainly are a lot of good ones, but there's also some not so good ones, right? I mean, right? Yeah. It's a great point. What else, ladies? What else would we like to talk about? I'm going to give everybody a, a countdown. I, I think it would be helpful. Please. I think it would be helpful if we could get like the classroom teachers at each school to be on the same kind of learning platform. Like at my school, some kids, some teachers are doing Moby Max, some mm -hmm. teachers are doing Google Classroom, some are doing Seesaw, and that's really hard for those of us that work with multiple teachers because they're the homeroom teacher for our students, and you have to keep track of what they're doing. But it's so many different platforms to learn. That's a lot of work. I added that to our notes. And I completely agree with you, Denise. Um, and that's a conversation that we at ESUs have tried to have with our, our districts. Um, but that, that need for consistency across educators. Um, for the students' sake, for the parents' sake, for, for our special education, staff sake i mean all of that is important i completely agree with you denise mm -hmm. 
All right, excellent. I'm going to leave and you can leave with me. Uh, this will automatically close in about 30 seconds. If you don't see that leave room, please do come back to the whole room. We're going to explain that, that uh, project uh, a little bit better in just a moment. See you in a second. We had it all on a website. How do I post it so it's private so someone else isn't? Does that make sense? Yeah, what I'm thinking is that you need to force make everybody a copy, but Andrew might have another idea. Yeah, it depends on. So ideally, as we talked about, like with just going back to that slides example, when you go to the second page and that would be where you would have the, it houses the link to whatever document it is, that, that's gonna have to get submitted somewhere, um, whether that's through a Google Classroom or Seesaw or however that, that may be that you're collecting that actual document. But if it's about modifying uh, the, act, the, the assignment itself, um, you could, once you create the entire board, make a copy of that and modif make your modifications and changes to certain assignments and then just share that modified board with the students in particular who needed that to, to meet those specific IEP goals. So I, I'm, I'm a little, I'm sorry, I, I think I'm between those two questions, but I think there's an answer in either, either way in terms of how we're either facilitating assignments or collecting those. Um, to, to just and I don't them. know if I made very good sense because that, that helped a lot. We just were trying to think of how to do, do we, need to do choice boards with like Seesaw so it's confidential with a student who's on an IEP. But if you copied and shared, then that makes sense. And you yeah, and on. Peg is putting in the in the chat that there is a way to differentiate in Google Classroom and Schoology and there is a way to differentiate in Seesaw as well. Okay. So the best way is to have a platform like Schoology or Seesaw and yeah. put your choice board into those. That, to me, that is the best way. And Jill, okay. I'm going to be um, with you guys next Tuesday morning for yes. Seesaw. And we, we heard that. We're very excited. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you both very much. Absolutely. All right, we're going to turn it over. Uh, Andrew, are you taking this part? Yeah, wrap us up here, Andrew. All right. Well, if you enjoyed being a part of the community today and getting a chance to learn with other Nebraska educators, we are going to continue being uh, invested in this work and, and growing in remote learning periodically over the summer. So relax, recoup, but we're going to be uh, hosting two half-day workshops um, later in May. Nick, help me out on the specific dates. 20... May 27 for our elementary friends from nine to noon uh, central time zone. There you go. And so we actually will go through filling out the document that you saw uh, Hannah speak to. And, and so we can kind of do some Q and A during that time. We'd love to have you register, which you can through probably the link that got you here. <laughs> the registration is we try to be consistent with that. And then we're excited for the future ready conference uh, in June dates on that Nicholas. June 15 and 16 from nine to noon on both days. Remember that conference is meant for our educators, for our administrators, our librarians, all of our stakeholders. Uh, it'll be a great one, a wonderful mix of national and state and local leaders uh, providing their thoughts on how can we move forward. Yep, and uh, I know we even talked a little bit today. Peg Coover has been in uh, this conversation. She's been leading a session on how to make a video. And so I was going to actually wrap up our choice board conversation by saying, if you're interested in that, there's going to be support for that coming up at the Future Ready Conference. Uh, if you are interested in building out these remote learning resources, um, we are going to take applications here coming up. This is my promise from the top. $250 for people who um, are you have to apply, but then once we kind of get our pool of people who've applied for that to fill out three of these remote learning um, lesson plans that we're going to use as examples that we can share across the state. Uh, and so if you want to um, apply to be a part of that, that's something that we'll be sending out via email uh, for you to register for as well. And all that being said, if we have anything else, you can stay involved in our conversations. Uh, we actually just launched our podcast here this past week. Uh, if you just kind of want to keep up to date on the conversations that ESU uh, and teachers really across uh, Nebraska are having at this time, uh, you can check out the Good Life EDU podcast um, that I've got a chance to host. And this week's episode will come out on Monday uh, with Katie Morrow 
who's a phenomenal educator, and I'm excited to, to kind of share our, our dialogue um, in that, that medium there. So did I leave anything out, Nick? We good? So friends, I want to know, there are a ton of links that we have shared with you in the chat box. If you go to the, open up your chat, you go to the three dots at the bottom, and you say save chat, you will have all of those links that you need to come back to. It doesn't look pretty on your computer. Um, you'll find it in a Zoom folder on your hard drive. It just awfully goes there. So awesome. Thank you all for joining. Thank you to our ESU partners for helping to coordinate this. This is our last Friday webinar for elementary folks, um, but, but we look forward to seeing you at, on May 27th or at our June conference. Um, thank you, elementary folks. Yeah, and welcome to our secondary folks. So our secondary folks. Thank you. Come on in. Bye-bye, you guys.